everyone kind of just rehashes the same fights. You see Blanche being like, no, daddy, don't go. And it happens three or four times. It just gets a little bit samey and repetitive. Oh my God, hey, welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theater. So not too long ago on my channel, I made a video talking about the concert version of Bonnie and Clyde. This was a concert reuniting the show's original star Jeremy Jordan with rising West End star Frances Maley McCann. With Nick Winston directing and a bunch of great supporting stars, it was a really fantastic semi-staged version of the show. And at the end of this concert, it was announced that there was going to be a West End run. And I don't know if it's because of how popular and sold out that concert was, or because this is a show whose cast recording has gained a lot of popularity and has taken a while to come over to the West End. I mean, it's also the first Frank Wildhorn musical to open properly on the West End. How crazy is that? But for whatever reason, there is a lot of hype around this show right now. I'm feeling a lot of love, a lot of energy for Bonnie and Clyde. Many of us were very hopeful that a lot of the casting of the concert would continue in the West End version of the show. And it has, because the show has now opened at the Arts Theatre with Frances Mailer McCann reprising her incredible performance as Bonnie Parker alongside new star Jordan Luke Gage, who steps into the role of Clyde Barrow. They are joined by Natalie McQueen and George Maguire, who return to the roles of Blanche and Buck, and the show has just opened. I recently got to go and see it. Thank you very much to Today Tix for some lovely mid stalls rush tickets. And I'm going to be letting you know what I thought about the show. Stay tuned for all things Bonnie and Clyde. Ooh. So I really enjoyed this show. This is a four star show for me, which is the same verdict that I came to after the concert version. And in many ways, it's very similar to that concert version. It's the same director. It's many of the same principal cast members. It is the same kind of aesthetic vibe. There haven't been big changes. There is a new song that has been introduced to the show since that version. And obviously since the original Broadway version, it didn't make a huge impact on me, but I also didn't feel that it really slowed down the moment either. It's fine, it's functional where it is, it's not a huge standout in an otherwise very strong score. I did like the set very much, I feel like it fits in really well on that stage in the arts theatre, I like the sliding panels. They did some clever reveals, there were some really lovely moments of direction, the cast are all really strong. The tone of the show is a really interesting one to maintain because you have these potentially very easily dislikable characters that you have to get an audience to root for, and so the way that they are endeared to us and the way that it's presented very much from their perspective is very clever, both in the writing and the way that it's been directed. And the way they tease the romance out of this ostensibly very sepia tone kind of story where a lot of traumatic and negative and depressing things are happening, the way they still manage to make this a love story is also really admirable, is also a really great creative achievement. So Nick Winston has some great moments of direction here. They do a lovely classic young version of the character turning into the older version of the character. And they have some great moments where that child version comes back and the adult version of Bonnie and Clyde are confronted by memories of themselves as children. A lot of the jail scenes staged very cleverly and staged very well. There were a couple of moments where things got repetitive for me, and I think that's because structurally the show can be repetitive as well, but there's a scene where Natalie McQueen as Blanche and Frances as Bonnie were having a conversation. Frances is on the sofa, Natalie McQueen is in an armchair and she stands up, walks around the back of the sofa while being sassy, does a lap of the stage and then goes back to her armchair. Frances says something else and then Natalie has to reply, so she stands up again, does another lap of the sofa and goes back. It just got a little bit repetitive. And there were moments where I wanted more intensity. Like, in Diane Ain't So Bad, Frances begins to sing this with Natalie McQueen still on stage. And she's singing this very powerful, emotional moment to her. And after the first verse, Natalie leaves. And it's kind of like you're letting the audience off the hook in terms of the tension that you've established there. Because these are two characters who do not like each other very much. So for her to be this blisteringly emotionally honest is a very powerful moment but to just then strip it back to character sings their feelings on stage is very basic musical theater. Having Blanche there makes it so much more interesting to me. My absolute creative highlight for this show, however, is the use of projections. My God, I will say easily the best projections I've ever seen in a West End theater. There's some moments where they're using silhouettes during the sentencing and the trial scenes. There's some incredible use of lighting, all of the jail scenes. Incredible, incredible projection work on that back wall completely amazing, completely transporting, in a very clever way of transforming a fairly basic set 
into something a lot more atmospheric that uses incredible storytelling. Some scenes where I did want more staging wise, and there's multiple reasons for this. So you've got the gospel song where Aiko Mitchell's singing God's arms are always open, everyone's giving it this. There just weren't enough people on stage for me. And the same with the act two opening sequence, Made in America. Again, Aiko Mitchell leading this number. It's a great number. I loved it in the concert and the staging is similar and the choreography feels familiar of that. I liked it more in the concert because there were more people and they had more power to that ensemble. It's a real kind of a mob scene and you need a bigger ensemble than the ensemble that they had. I mean, you have to talk about Bonnie and Clyde. When I saw the concert in January, I was blown away by Frances Maley McCann. I still love her performance here. And it's not that it's completely showy, it's so nuanced, it's so real. She is living inside of this woman and presenting you this incredibly real, heartbreaking and fascinating character in terms of her mindset and the things she goes through and how aspirational she is and how flawed she is and how willing she is to be corrupted by love, it is fascinating to watch. But also the chemistry that they have with each other, their early scenes and the moment when they first sort of butt heads and have almost an altercation is just gripping, completely incredible theatre. I will say, I was dubious when Jordan Luke Gage was cast in this role, only because it felt like he was kind of being cast as a default. I mean, everyone was talking about it before it had even happened. And then, bam, of course, he was cast in this role. He blew me away with this performance, far exceeding anything I've ever seen him do before. I mean, I really liked him in shows previously. I really liked him as Romeo, but wow, did I think he was great in this. He's exactly the right kind of offbeat charming with something sort of wrong behind the eyes with that pain and that darkness to him. When he does raise a little hell in the jail scene, it was just a gut punch. It was an incredible emotional performance, absolutely blistering. In fact, that's the thing that's making me want to go back and get tickets again already just to see him do that again, which is incredibly telling. That's a huge compliment. And I can't not shout out Natalie McQueen. She is so perfectly cast in this role. I am so, so glad that they found her for this show. She is brilliant. The voice that she does, she's hilarious. Also, so affecting. She is the reason you will cry at the end of this show. It's an incredible performance. She has these great sassy one-liners throughout that bring this levity to it, but then she also ends up being kind of the heart of the show and has this incredible emotional arc. It's a really phenomenal performance that I hope gets award recognition down the line. And also she sings really beautifully. Like she has this voice that does that country style so well. I mean, we've heard her sing like Dolly Parton in 9 to 5. It's a similar voice she's doing here, but so, so stirring when she has these kind of lullaby-esque songs when she's duetting on Love Who You Love and singing That's What You Call A Dream. It's stunning. I always end up wanting more structurally from this show. And I think it's such an interesting premise and there's some moments that work really well. There are other moments I would cut and I just want more intensity because you're seeing Bonnie and Clyde and you're expecting action and gunshots. And there are both of those things, but they're quite measured. We spend a lot more time dwelling on them. And there are so many moments, and I said this on my previous video as well, when they come in and they have a conversation with someone and it just starts to get interesting and the other person leaves. And then one person just is left alone on stage to sing their feelings. The moment that really gets me and where it starts to feel really stagnant is when they are both singing to their parents, but their parents aren't there. They're singing, What was always good enough for you, ma? Gah. It's just too slow. It slows it down. We're starting to build up pace by that point in the show, and I'm like, I need more action. I need more intensity. I need more romance. I need more thrill. It's Bonnie and Clyde. It should be faster paced. It should be thrilling. I also feel like Ted's arc is slightly strange. This is the deputy sheriff. I believe he's the deputy sheriff. I don't know what his what his rank is. Sorry to that man. He's the one who's got the hots for Bonnie because he remembers her as a child. Weird. And so he's very conflicted throughout the whole thing, but he's so one note in his, oh, she's bad, but I still love her. And it just starts to get grating, especially in this version. And there's some moments where he's really abrupt to Blanche and Buck, and it doesn't really connect with the reason he's doing it is because he's so furious at Clyde for corrupting Bonnie in his eyes and I feel like there's more to be drawn out of that. There's more scenes that could 
play on that. You want to see him and Clyde actually having some kind of a confrontation about it or him confronting Bonnie about it, but there's not really anywhere where that happens. You just see Bonnie's mum getting sad over and over and over again. Everyone kind of just rehashes the same fights. You see Blanche being like, no, daddy, don't go. And it happens three or four times. It just gets a little bit samey and repetitive. I feel like structurally there are more interesting things you could do with this story. The highlight moment of the show. I mean, both of their big solo numbers are really great. Jordan's Raise a Little Hell, Francis's Dying Ain't So Bad are really, really strong parts of the show. I also just really enjoy, controversially, just where it starts to really come into its own in the second act when they start to become Bonnie and Clyde. And it's not even the songs, it's some of the scenes that they get to do where it has this intensity, but also this comedy to it. It's this really interesting tonal shift from the beginning of a scene to an end where they're juggling this comedy and this darkness. I also really enjoy the last scene of the show. The way it's staged, the way it's written, I think it's a really perfect, beautiful ending that I enjoy very much. And the whole thing is very cohesive, like in terms of the writing, there's not ups and downs so much as everything is kind of on a level quality-wise. The theatre going experience. So if you haven't been to the arts theatre before, it is cramped on the inside. They've got some really cool photo opportunities. They've got this Bonnie and Clyde mirror thing where you can take a mirror selfie of yourself inside this big heart. They've got a prison lineup wall thing. What's that called? I don't know what that's called. I've not been to jail. Anyone who's been to jail, let us know in the comments what the prison lineup thing is. And also tell us about that because wow. So you can have your mugshot taken at Bonnie and Clyde. They're also doing themed cocktails, which I love. I didn't get a chance to have any. Order your drinks pre-show because the interval queue, my gosh. It was really warm in the auditorium when I was there as well. So maybe grab some water from the bar beforehand, but not so much that you need to pee because the toilet queue is also insane. And the men's toilets at the arts, famously bad. I've not been inside the women's toilets, but if they're the same, then, you know, there's just not many of them and they're really small and the theatre needs redesigning and redeveloping and maybe to be gutted and just try again. I had a really great view from my Today Ticks rush seat in the stalls. I think I was in row G or row F, but it's that kind of a small intimate theatre where I don't think you're going to have a terrible view wherever you are. It's pretty open and everything is staged pretty centrally, so you're not going to miss much. In terms of merch, they're also selling some lovely merch as well. They have mugs, they have pin badges, they have programs, they have new t-shirts that are slightly more orange than the one I'm currently wearing. I kind of like the new t-shirts more. I'm a little bit mad that I already have this one. This is really great date night theatre. If you've never got into this show, this show seems to appeal to a lot of the kind of niche musical theatre fans, the people who like do musical theatre society at university. For some reason, always really love Bonnie and Clyde. If you like Heathers, it has that same kind of like comedy with darkness vibes to it, but definitely a lot of young adult theatre fan appeal in this one. But it also works completely for a mature audience. This is not necessarily a show for young people. It's a really smart adult show. Like I said, great date night theatre. I will say, if you are someone who struggles with gunshots, which I absolutely am, hate gunshots in shows, I didn't really have a problem with this one. I think, for one thing, they're using sound effects rather than live guns on stage, so it's not as loud, but also it seems to be pretty clearly signposted as and when it's going to happen. They never took me hugely by surprise, so if I can cope with it, I believe in you all as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video. That has been my review of Bonnie and Clyde at the Arts Theatre. I really enjoyed the show. I hope it has a great run in the West End. I hope lots of people go and buy tickets and go and enjoy it for themselves. I'm excited to go back. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stage YouTube channel where there are plenty more videos about all of your favorite shows coming very soon. Also, if you want to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where you can gain access to a bunch of exclusive photos and videos. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!